big question. Which Bible version is best for you to make that decision? We need to understand, oh boy, some definitions. The first one, a translation. The transformation of the written text from the source language, which would be Hebrew or Greek and Aramaic, to the receptor language. Then there is a transliteration, a word-for-word -word equivalent. Do you see the difference? This is important because there are some Bible translations that are very literal. They try to be exactly word-for-word-for-word -word -for -word from one language to another, and other Bible translations will get a little bit looser to convey the meaning. Well, now that we have some basic understanding of these terms, let's dive in and see what the best and worst Bibles are of 2023. Well, welcome to Real Talk with Jordan Riley, where the real talk does not come from me, it comes directly from God's Word. And before we get started, would you please consider subscribing to our channel and giving this a thumbs up. On today's episode, we're going to examine the Word of God and see which Bibles are the best to use and which ones belong in the garbage. What do you mean by that? You know, I get emails from all around the world and comments a lot of times on this channel asking me, you know, Jordan, what Bibles do you use? And I'm telling you, if you stay to the end, I will tell you personally what I use and what I highly recommend. So, let's get started. Now, I want to say, starting off, how important it is to be in the Word of God. You know, many people, they open their Bibles on Sundays, come home from church, close it, and it remains closed until the following Sunday. And that's a tragedy. You wouldn't, you know, wake up on Sunday, have this big, ginormous meal, go through the whole entire week not eating one single thing, and then the following Sunday, have another meal. You would starve. And I'm telling you right now, if you only open your Bibles on Sunday, you are starving your spirit. Amos chapter 8, verses 11 and 12 is very clear in this. It says that in the last days, there will be a famine for hearing God's word. And we need to start opening up our Bibles, reading them, instead of always relying on others to do it for us. All right, now we can get started. Let's break down these Bible translations, these Bible versions, into three categories so you can kind of see how we can examine them. These three categories are word for word, thought for thought, and paraphrase, all right? First of all, word for word. If you want to know what the original author intended, and you want to read something that is literal, you will want word for word, okay? This is the kind, you know, that you see a lot of pastors preach from. It's a good study tool as you want to dive in and really get to know what God's word has to say. Second, there's, again, thought for thought. These versions help to possibly bring clarity, you know, to kind of see what the author said or kind of fill in maybe a few gaps, so to speak, of what the author intended. These are good for new Christians or people who may need a little help kind of understanding what God's word says. And then there's the paraphrase way over here. <laughs> you know, this is if you want someone else's thought on what the author said, then this is for you. But why would you want a third party telling you what they think the Bible says? So let's look at a couple examples of these three types in action. Let's look at John 3.16 in these three categories. So first of all, the NASB, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Now, let's look at the NLT or the New Living Translation. It says, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And finally, last but not least, is the Message Bible. John 3.16, this is what it says. This is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son. And this is why, so that no one needed to be destroyed by believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. Bro, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> what? A whole and lasting life? Did that say that in either of the other two translations? No, it's talking about salvation, eternal life. Not a whole and lasting life in this life. 
The Message Bible is already seen how bad it's going, and it's far away from the other two categories. Now let's look at Psalm 1-6. I want you to see this and see what it says. So in the New King James Version, that's the first word-for-word -word category, it says, For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly, of the ungodly shall perish. The New Living Translation in the Thought for Thought category, it says, For the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. And last but not least is the Message Bible. And it says, God charts the road you take. The road they take is Skid Row. <laughs> what? Skid Row? What's wrong with you people? I, I mean, when the Bible was written, there was no such thing as Skid Row. Again, this is literally man-centered, came from my head, nonsense. And, it, and it's sad, but again, why would anybody want that? So again, now that you've heard the three categories, you've seen them side by side, let's look at what those three, or what the, the three categories, what Bibles fit into them. So in the word for word category, we have the Legacy Standard Bible. And some of you haven't heard of this. This is a fairly new Bible in the last year, year and a half. It's from John MacArthur and a bunch of associates who spent about three to four years putting this together. It is, it is I, I highly recommend, I think it's a great Bible to use. Also in this category is the New American Standard Bible or the NASB. Then there's the ESV, English Standard Version. There's the New King James Version and the King James Version. And they kind of went in that ascending order, that descending order from top to bottom. Um, also then there's the Thought for Thought. You have the NIV, New International Version, then the NLT, New Living Translation, and the GNB, which is the Good News Bible. And last, again, but not least, unfortunately, is the paraphrase. And the two that are in that, especially for today, is the Message Bible and the Passion Translation. How about new? Now, the Message Bible, also known as MSG for short, um, let me be very clear that no one should be using that Bible. And if you are sitting under a pastor who uses that Bible, run, get out. Same with the both of these, same with the Passion Translation as well. These are horrific. Then this is, again, this is a man telling you what he thinks God meant. They don't even know Greek and Hebrew pretty much. They're not trained. They just kind of winged it and talked about what they thought. It is absolute garbage, okay? It also distorts what God had to say. And, and a funny little thing about this, do you know what MSG stands for in real terms, not just in the Message Bible? It's monosodium glutamate. It's what they put in food, especially at fast, fast foods, is like a flavoring to make food taste good. Now, do you know what it leads to if you have excessive MSG? <laughs> I think this is actually pretty, pretty funny and fitting for the message. It leads to hypertension. It leads to obesity. It leads to gas. And it leads to the impairment of the brain. Think about that. If you're feeding on the MSG, the message Bible, or the, the passion translation, you're in big trouble and it is not going good for you. So no, take the Message Bible, take the Passion Translation, and throw them away. They're not useful for anything other than toilet paper or kindling. So now that we've eliminated them, let's look at the other two categories and see what that, which is best in those. So the Thought for Thought Bible, again, this is the NIV, the NLT, and the Good News Bible. And again, I'm not saying these are bad. Thought for thought is not a bad thing. It can definitely help enhance, you know, as you study the word of God. But as you mature as a believer, you don't you want to go from thought to literal. You want to know exactly what God had to say. You know, not just have kind of a generalized thought. You want to know really truly what the word of God says. And again, it's okay to start that way, but again, you want to kind of work your way up. You know, that's why I said that the thought for thought you know, versions are, are good for beginning believers, people who just came to faith in Christ as they're kind of growing in their faith. And finally, the word for word category, which is the Legacy Standard Bible, NASB, New King James, and the King James Version. I believe this category is the one that you should be in if you want to hear the literal word of God. This category is faithful to the original text without adding thoughts or feelings to it. Now, as far as what I use, it should be pretty obvious. 
I use the NASB and the Legacy Standard Bible. Um, I've used the NASB, or the NASB for a long time and finally kind of moved over and put it together with the Legacy Standard Bible and it's phenomenal. And the one thing I appreciate about the Legacy Standard Bible really quick is that it uses the word slave, doulos in the Greek, all the time. Because a lot of times for many, many years, everyone wanted to say servant to kind of dumb it down, especially when we went through with slavery and it's so bad and stuff like that. And no, the word means slave. I'm a slave of Christ. And I love how the Legacy Standard Bible gets it right and it's bold and it's really absolutely so right on with the text of God's word. And please understand, both of them are, are, are extremely accurate. Um, but I want you to see this. Now, I know, you know, many people, when it comes to their Bibles, they're very, you know, they can cling to a certain, you know, Bible. I have you know, read this since I was a little kid, and I get that. And please understand, that's okay. Unless it's the paraphrase, unless it's the message and the, the, the Passion Translation, throw them away. Please get something more reliable. But let me say this. To my friends out there, people who are, are struggling if you are a King James Version onlyist, please realize that there's nothing in God's word that allows it. There is no verse in scripture that says, oh, the King James Version, that's it. Now, the King James Version is a solid biblical translation, but it is not the only. And it uses texts and manuscripts that were found long time ago, and we found newer, more accurate ones closer to the time of Jesus. That's what the NASB and the Legacy Standard Bible utilize. Let's not idolize a certain version. Let's get into God's word. Let's obey God's word. Let's share God's word. Let's love God's word and honor it. But I want you to know my hope today in doing this episode is that we will be in God's word daily. It's the meat and the milk. It's the substance that we need to survive and to lead godly lives.